Hi, my name is Frank Paganis, and this is Take Over My Makeover. On this episode, we're going to talk about two of the hottest hair coloring trends in the industry today, balayage and ombre. So today, with Nini, we have a, a, a balayage technique that is going to help to give the hair a lot of dimension and a highlighted look, but it's not going to look like stripes, like foils can look sometimes. If you look at any magazine right now, you're going to see some star that has uh, some form of a multi-dimensional hair color, whether it be Drew Barrymore, Sarah Jessica Parker, Jennifer Aniston, uh, you know, they all really have this highlighted or multi-dimensional look. Jennifer Lopez is a great example. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show a couple of examples of what, of what ombre and balayage look like. So this is a more, this is a, a more of a, of a softer uh, balayage, closer to an ombre. And you can just see how the colors meld in from one to the next. And you can see the dimension without seeing stripes. So that's one example. The other example I have on the cover of InStyle magazine uh, for March, you see Jennifer Aniston. And you see how her hair ha is a beautiful blonde color and it, it, the, the tone of value uh, really is, is, uh, is such that it has a lot of tones in it, warmer tones, lighter tones. And even in certain ads, like this one I just pulled from, from The Gap, you know, The Gap has an ad where they're showing the, the ombre as well. So, and it's just, it's something that looks fresh. It's really, really cool right now. And you can see how on this model on the left, how her hair is dark, and then it melds into this hair that has the, you know, the, the lighter pieces. And of course, the model on, uh, I'm sorry, the, before that was the right. The girl on the left here has a little bit more of a traditional balayage with a, a darker rooted area. So it's really, really cool. And the nice thing about having balayage or the ombre is that because of the way that we apply the product and, and uh, the technique that we use, as the hair grows out, you won't see a harsh line of demarcation. And I'm gonna move Needy over like this and you can see how we literally painted the, the product on. And this will, let me give a little bit of a better example. Let me pull some of this away. So here's another really good example of what the kind of the ombre looks like. So we're, we're diffusing product from the base and we're starting it somewhere in this region. And this helps to give dimension at the mid strand and the ends but not disturbing her base color. You know, to some it looks like outgrown highlights. Um, and that's part of the look right now, you know. And again, it's a trend. It's not for everybody and that's okay. But it's a beautiful way to have highlighted hair, um, but also not have to worry about getting it touched up too often. A person who comes in for ombre is gonna come in two, three times a year maybe. Uh, someone with traditional balayage, where we're getting the product a little bit closer and we're gonna bring up our other model in just a moment to show you what that looks like. Uh, it really helps to give, again, a lot of dimension. So, you know, younger people especially who are, you know, are gonna be the trendsetters, uh, they're the ones who are gonna, you're gonna start seeing balayage. I was fortunate enough to learn this in, uh, in Manhattan back in 2004 from Frederick Fakai, who's one of the biggest names in the industry. And although it's not popular in Chicago, we did this because if you go to the east and west coasts, this is the primary way that they are highlighting hair. So, and again, one of the benefits is, A, it looks fantastic. B, the outgrowth, the, 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 the hair as it, as it grows out does not look stripy or stringy. And uh, it helps to give a lot of dimension without, uh, without having that hard line of demarcation. So, and you can do this on light hair, you can do it on dark hair, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, so Nini, when you're, when you're thinking about your hair color, what, what sounded appealing about the balayage to you or the ombre? I like that it has more dimensions to it. My hair tends to be very flat, uh, no matter what I seem to do with it, okay. uh, whether I curl it or straighten it. Um, I like the idea because it will add different dimensions and the shading I know will be different Wonderful. for my hair. Exactly. So I like that. You know, and that's really the great thing too, you know, because it's a technique and not an actual color, we can customize it to anybody. Some people just want to break up their solid color and just maybe have a little bit of shimmer, balayage and ombre is perfect for that. Someone who wants something a little bit more bold and daring, 
we can do that as well. But again, the great benefit is that as it grows out, you're not seeing that harsh line of demarcation. Uh, when you're thinking about maintaining your, your hair color at home, always make sure you're using a shampoo and a conditioner that is specifically for color treated hair. It's different than a regular shampoo because it's lower on the pH scale, so it's lower in alkalinity, and it's not gonna make the hair itself swell uh, as much as regular shampoo. This, the, this is a great benefit because then it will allow the color molecule to stay in the hair a longer period of time. And then making sure that the conditioner is made for color treated hair too, so that it keeps the moisture levels at, at their optimum, so that we're keeping the hair in really, really good shape. So, and that's one of the great benefits. So now I understand you're going to be you're going to be traveling abroad, yeah. and so the other beautiful thing about the balayage and ombre is that because you know it's so graceful in the way that it grows out, that you know you can take longer times in between services and not have to worry about having a a, a grown out look. Some of my clients that started off being balayage clients have then transitioned into ombre clients, which basically means they just let it grow out a little bit more, and all of a sudden, we then, we then add maybe a toner or different tones from like the eyes and down, leaving the base color alone. So you really get a lot of time in between. So, and although it may be a little bit more expensive uh, in, in the beginning, you're not getting the service done quite as often. So at the end of the year, you're probably saving some money. So, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the coolest thing in the world. So balayage itself means to sweep. And as opposed to isolating the hair and putting it in foil, we're actually taking the hair and we're painting it on. So it's much more creative. And that's probably one of the reasons why we haven't seen it in the Midwest, because there is a, a really huge learning curve in, in how to be proficient at it. Um, and, and with that, uh, it, it was very hard to learn, but uh, we just, you know, we kept moving forward. And it's something that really, really uh, is beautiful. So. You know, so in moving forward, you know, why, uh, what does dimension do for you? I mean, you've got dark hair, why is dimension important? Well, I have very flat hair, okay. and it's very oily, um, so I often don't have a lot of freedom as far as how uh, voluminous my hair can be. Okay. And I've seen that in other girls' hair, it's not so much about how high your hair is, but how the light hits your hair. Okay. And sometimes I've noticed that adds a little bit of flare or volume to gotcha. it. Gotcha. That's a good point because, you know, when you're adding hair color to your hair, you are adding texture as well. And this is going to help to support fullness and to support volume. In a later show, we'll be doing blow drying and styling. We can show you that too, but, but for today, the beauty of is, is seeing what uh, the balayage and the ombre looks like. So, uh, in just a few moments, we're actually going to have our other model come up and we're gonna show you what balayage looks like, and then at the end, we're gonna show you what the end result looks like. So, and uh, the word balayage itself, loosely in French, means to sweep. So, and we're actually taking the, our, our color brush and we're sweeping the product on. If you're wondering what this plastic wrap is, this is a way of isolating the hair so that we can, number one, allow the heat to maintain in that area and process better. And then also, it allows us to protect each section. So, stay, uh, in a few moments, we're going to bring up our, our other model, and then maybe as well, and uh, we'll see you in a few. Welcome back. I've got Lizzie Hawk with me today, and uh, we've already done the balayage uh, coloring technique on Lizzie's hair. And her hair has been dried a little bit. I'm just going to finish up the blow drying a little to support the color. And Lizzie, so before this, have you ever had balayage before? No, never. Have you had highlights before? Mm-mm. Okay, so this is the first time coloring. Yeah. You know, that's a great way to introduce someone to color too. And, uh, you know, because now it looks as if you're on the beach for like a month in Acapulco or something or like Cancun. Because mm. um, it helps to give that dimension. But as you can see, you know, you can see where the color kind of comes in, but you don't see hard lines of demarcation. And you don't see any striping or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a little bit of blow drying just to kind of get it in shape so you can see the, the results of the color real fast. So.
it down a little bit, right there. As I kind of brush through the hair, you can see how you've got areas of lightness that just give a little bit of dimension. And again, this is a great way to introduce Lizzie to hair color. And if it's something that she chooses to continue, she can. If she doesn't, it then as this color starts to kind of, kind of work down the head shape like so, it, it look, has an ombre look and it's fantastic. So we're gonna finish this up with a little bit of styling. And as we pull Lizzie's hair back, you can see how underneath, you know, it's more of a solid color. And then about the mid range is where we start adding the dimension. And you can start to see how the color is starting to break up now. So from there, and again, it's very, very subtle. And that's the beauty of the balayage. Uh, in this case, in introducing Lindsay to hair color, it's a great way to add dimension. And, you know, if we wanted to, you know, she can come back if she wanted to do something a little bit more daring next time. You know, we can do more ombre in through this area, lightening up this area so that it's, uh, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more progressive. So right now we'll go through, we're gonna add a little bit of pomade and again small amounts when using pomade you don't need a lot of product you're better off using small amounts of product more often as opposed to a lot of product at once so we're going to get a nice even thin coat on longer hair we're going to be very gentle we're hardly going to touch the light, the hair we're going to just kind of let our hands dance over the surface we're then gonna go through, re-emulsify to redistribute what's left. At this point, we're very gently gonna put our hands through. And again, I'm, I'm hardly touching Lizzie's hair right now. Because what happens with pomade on long hair especially is, if you apply it too aggressively, it can look greasy. And that's the biggest concern that people have when using pomade. So we're gonna keep doing this very gently until I feel like there's hardly anything left on my hand then we can start to manipulate uh, a little bit stronger if we need to. And oftentimes you don't even need to. So, this, the pomade also helps to illuminate the hair and really show the detail of the color. So, kind of like that. So, Lindsay, tell me, what is it about, uh, what is it about the hair color that, that you like now that you've seen it? I just like how it's different than what I had before, but it's not too extreme. Okay. Like, it's not too over the top or So, it's anything. nice and subtle. Yeah. Very good. So, and it's something your mom's not going to get you mad about. Right. Rock and roll. It's very important. Uh, so, and... Uh, again, maintenance on, uh, on highlights is really, really important because there are only certain parts of the hair that have now been affected by color. And as gentle of a product as we use and is on the market, it still is altering the internal structure of the hair. So we want to make sure that our shampoo and our conditioner is made for color treated hair. And to support the highlights, you know, there's actually a shampoo called uh, Shimmering Lights. And it's something you can get at, you can get at, uh, at, uh, at Sally Beauty, and it actually is purple in color. And when you have a highlighted look like this, purple will help to kind of keep the, the warmth of the, of the highlights in control, which is really important so that they don't look brassy over time. So, and I think ultimately, it's something that complements Lizzie very well. You can see how, especially in through here, it really just helps to break up the hair around the front. And uh, it's very, very pretty but it still has some warmth in it. It's not super, super light. 
Um, now over the summer, you know, there is a chance that this will lighten up a little bit more just with, with the natural lightening effects of the sun. Um, and as long as she's making sure that like when you go into a pool, okay, make sure that when you're in the pool or before you get in, you know, you want to rinse your hair off first because tap water has less chlorine than does, uh, than does pool water, okay? okay? And then as soon as you get out, try to rinse your hair as well too. So that's really important as well. So do you have any other questions for me? No? no? Good. So, so with that, you know, ombre is, and the balayage is something that uh, is new to the Midwest. There is a good chance that you haven't heard of it yet. Uh, but if you, if you go to uh, YouTube and you punch in Pagani hair, you can actually see a couple of highlight videos that we did that talk about the balayage highlights, the ombre highlights, as well as uh, some of the other videos that we have. And, you know, it's, it's the most importantly, I think, is if, if some of you out there have never had hair color before and you want to introduce yourself to it, uh, but you don't want to be committed to having to, to, you know, keep getting it done over and over, I think balayage and or ombre is a great, great way. So, um, so with that, you know, as this grows out, uh, because you're not going to see lines of demarcation, you also can wear it in many directions, and that's the beauty of it. You know, so if Lizzie was going to wear her hair from left to right now, as opposed to right to left, you know, you're still going to see the, the benefits of the highlights kind of through the mid strand and the ends. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about it. So, uh, and I think we're good. So with that, I'd like to thank you. And uh, we'll be back in our next segment to show both Lizzie and, uh, and our other model. And uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back to uh, our, our show. Uh, I've got Nettie Reyes and Lizzie Hawk, and we've got the end result of what our balayage and our ombre looks like. And as you can see from both girls, they have a little bit of dimension in their hair. Without it screaming out, I've got highlights. They look like they could have been on the beach for a month somewhere, and uh, it's beautiful. So first and foremost, how do you ladies like your hair? I love mine. Yeah, I do too. So tell me what it is about your hair color that you like. And what's different about it? Well, I like that it's light enough so that you can tell that I have done something to my hair, at least done something to make it look better. But it's not so uh, so light as to say I've been in the salon for hours, okay. which is I think what every girl wants to go for. Okay, so something more natural. You, they want, you want it to look done, but not done. Yeah. Okay, very good. Lizzie, I'm pretty much you? the same. Okay. Yeah, very subtle, cool. nice. I like Excellent. it. So, uh, in, in styling their hair, you, we, we, we put a uh, product in at the base, and then we blew it dry straight, and then in giving a little bit of an angle for, for, the, for the fringe, and up and off of the head shape a little bit so that it emphasizes more bone structure. Same thing with Lizzie too, just kind of pulling this up and over so that it complements, uh, and it just kind of looks like it naturally hangs that way, which I think is really, really cool. So, uh, I'm gonna go through and just do a little bit of detailing when you're using hairspray, always try to spray with the growth of hair, never up into the hair, because uh, that's always going to make the frizziness and flyaways, if you have any, it's gonna make them stand out more. So by working down the hair like so, you know, when using hairspray, if you spray without touching the hair, it's going to become firm. If you spray and then manipulate a little bit, you'll get the strength of the spray without it, uh, without it getting too stiff which I think is really important. So, and again, the most important thing about the balayage and the ombre is, A, it looks natural. Uh, B, it doesn't have, you know, those, those stripes. And sometimes you'll see someone walking around that has had uh, fresh uh, blonde streaks put in their hair or big bolts of color. And we're not seeing too much of that in the industry right now. We're seeing more, uh, more subtle trend, uh, uh, transitions from natural color to the end result color again uh, you know as if you were out in the sun for a long long time so and uh, over here on Lizzie you can see we made her hair a little bit lighter so just a, a little bit more pronounced and this is more of a, of a traditional ombre or I'm sorry a traditional balayage where you, you're starting to see more dimension through the top as well as through the ends and on uh, Nettie, we did we did the we did the, the ombre more on the outer portion through here, but then up in the front we added a little bit of detail just so that we can soften up the color around the face. So uh, with that, 
You know, the, the beautiful thing about this is you're not going to have to come into the salon six weeks or even every 12 weeks. You know, a typical foil highlight client is going to come in eight to 12 weeks, say. And in something like this, you can go 14 to 16 weeks. And if you didn't want to get it done again, well, you know, as Liz, this is your first time getting hair color, if you said, you know what, I just don't really want to do anything right now, because the transition is so graceful, it will start to uh, morph into that ombre look, which is still very, very popular. So, you know, so you can get away with not doing your hair color if you wanted. But then again, if she, if she said, you know what, I really like the way that this looks, then you can come back in and then we can retouch the areas that have not been colored yet. And we can then add more colors. We can do lighter pieces around the face. Uh, you'll see a lot of the catalogs and magazines where, especially in the summertime, and this could be something for the both of you can do, we can do just a lighter piece right around the front, do a band, and then support it with some darker blondes that we can put in, which looks absolutely beautiful. And then what that'll do is, especially when, you know, over the summer, our, our, our skin is typically a little bit darker just from being in the sun. Uh, the lighter hair around the face uh, against a darker complexion, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, uh, I can't stress enough maintenance, you know. And the other thing too is, uh, you have to be careful when you're in the shower about how you're actually shampooing your hair. You know, going back to one of the other shows that we talked about shampooing and conditioning. When you're using your shampoo, you want to make sure that you're using about the size of a quarter. And especially on long hair, you want to make sure that you're very lightly running the shampoo through your hair first, getting some more water from the shower, emulsifying the rest of the shampoo, then putting your fingers through the, the base. And then when you're shampooing, never take your hair and ball it up. I see, I hear of a lot of girls where they'll take their hair like this, they'll ball it up and they'll go like that. And what you're doing is two things actually. You're actually allowing the hair to tangle uh, a lot worse, which makes it much harder to get a brush through when you're done. Um, it also makes it harder to, uh, to, con to keep the hair in good shape and in good, uh, in good condition. Also, you're actually creating friction on the outer structure, which is the cuticle, and that's actually going to promote split ends uh, and in areas where it's not as smooth. So when you get in the shower, again, you're gonna put the shampoo, just kind of run it through your, your fingers, okay? And you're gonna work this down, just kind of like so, and then you'll go through, and then you're gonna shampoo at the base, and then from there, you're gonna rinse this out and make sure after you rinse your shampoo out, wring out the excess water so that when you're using your conditioner, your hair will accept the conditioner well. If you think of, you know, hair is like, a, is a porous material like any other thing like a sponge. If a sponge has been filled with water, it can no longer accept water, correct? Well, that's why you wanna make sure you wring out that excess water so your hair can then accept the nutrients from the conditioner and then you wanna comb that through and clip the hair up and out of the way with, with, uh, with like a jaw clip, okay? And let it sit there while you're taking your shower so that you're giving the conditioner a few minutes to do its job, which in turn is going to make your hair a lot shinier. It's going to eliminate some of the flyaway and frizziness and it'll be much easier to maintain and it's gonna preserve the color much longer. So uh, that's, I would like to thank uh, both Nettie and Lizzie for helping me out today and I hope you ladies love your hair color and uh, if you have any further questions you can always feel free to, to contact us at Pagani here in downtown Riverside.